Year 17. The Rule of Alias. Excerpts from the Gospel of Zalius, first chapter of the Testament of Cleansing. First of Limestone, 118. I arrived months ago, but only today have I decided to chronicle what will surely be the small and meaningless nature of my life. They promised glory, riches, a life of pleasure and luxury such as was to be found nowhere else in all of dwarfdom. I was shown messages sent by my loved ones, my friends and relatives, even a special summons from my famous Aunt Yalius, the Countess of Headshoots, an honor I surely did not deserve. I survived the endless trek across barren wastes, survived attacks by giant eagles and feral sheep, and when we arrived, where were the sparkling gates of diamond? Where were the welcoming roads paved in purest adamantine? No, a blasted hellhole, foul miasmas rising across the uncaring rocks, and the skulls of the dead littering everything was what greeted us. Indeed, some of the skulls were more lively than the inhabitants of this thrice-cursed pit. But I persevered. All I wanted was to do my job, and earn a little pay, and have a dwelling to call my own. One day, I would raise a family. I never wanted to stand out, no. Other members of my family had tried that, and look at what it had gotten them. But I'm no minor, never was, never will be. And when I showed up, they asked me what I could do. Miller, I said. I'm a miller. A minery, crowed the disgusting halfwit who was apparently in charge. Here's your pick then, sweetie. I almost stove his wretched head in, but fear of the monster, holistic detective, stayed my hand. What a creature! All dwarves should aspire to such strength, such prowess, such power. Second of Limestone, 118. Horror, oh most foul fate, why such cruelty to one who seeks guidance and a place to belong? The overseer, Kennel, declared his life work completed, by me and mine no less, how is it his accomplishment, and so retired to spend his days gutting fish and chasing noble tail. I was dragged before Count Katarani Sword, and ordered at Hammerface to take over where he left off. Apparently, my aunt had left instructions that I was to be appointed overseer in her absence. She's even supposed to have left detailed instructions for the running of head shoots. I want nothing to do with the management of this hellhole. The fortress is a rat's nest of tunnels, failed delusions of grandeur, and hasty attempts to appease previous rulers. How can I hope to understand such a place? Who could ever know how to run it? I hope that her instructions can help. I don't know what to do. I've never been under so much stress. At least I got to see Holistic Detective again. She is truly a god above dwarves. Fourth of Limestone, 118. After much searching, I found a document that mentions the name of my august aunt, Countess Yelius. Although it has not been written by her, it appears to bear her signature of approval, which is oddly coarse and poorly drawn. I would have thought her runesmithy more refined. The actual plan was drawn up, presumably on her orders, by one You're Getting Fatter, a previous overseer. While I do not fully understand the wisdom of this plan, I will do my best to follow her wise decision. Apparently, the fortress is suffering from an unfair distribution of basic resources. It seems that the sage Yalius was surprisingly enlightened. The plan calls for the repurposing of all throne rooms and the equal distribution of chores. It's refreshing to see a noble call for class equality, and I'm sure that, with Hedshu's position as capital of our civilization, my, or rather, Yalius's, brilliant step forward for equality will begin a sweeping transformation for all of dwarfdom. After removing all property from the hands of noble and bored 
Joe Z, whatever that is, alike, I've settled down to consider how best to proceed. I only hope that Holistic Detective will not haunt my dreams again. I'm on the verge of madness already. With the responsibility of directing the seat of all dwarves the world over on my small, untested shoulders, all I ever wanted was to belong, to be part of something greater. Let's... Let's hope that I can withstand the fulfillment of my wish. Tenth of Limestone, 118. It is decided. And now, my plan for the salvation of headshoots proceeds apace. The noble have been stripped of all their properties, with the exception of their tombs, which are already engraved and therefore pointless to repurpose. A great accounting must be held. All of the possessions demanded by these leeches over the years must be found, melted, reused. For the great plan, the one and only plan, must continue. I must not let my ancestors down. The memory of Queen Sankus must not be allowed to die. And we must all strive to become perfect dwarves, great and strong and industrious. To this end, I have ordered all previous artifacts melted to their base materials that they be made as needed. Dwarf society will no longer be held hostage by the strictures of the past. Naturally, the nobles are unhappy about this, expressing their anger in mandates and price changes. But I have at least one ally. Holistic Detective looks well upon this work. I can tell you, see. Oh, oh, certainly she has not deigned to notice me. But I can feel her approval all the same. I will follow the plan as it was given me. I will not let her down. Twentieth of Limestone. One eighteen. A revelation came to me in my sleep. My purpose in life is now clear. The moment of truth is not yet upon me, but soon, soon, soon all shall know me for who I am, and all shall recognize their place in the world. Yalius never saw the truth. Her schemes, while useful for my newfound purpose, were short-sighted and strangely self-destructive. I, on the other hand, will bring truth and light to dwarf kind, not just some economic equality. None will be able to resist the changes that are to come. Not even the plants themselves can rebel, struggle though they may. First of Sandstone, 118. The elven merchants arrive today. They have no part to play in the times that are to come. I sent our broker with instructions to seize some of their goods and send them on their way. Hopefully this will give them pause and keep them from returning to taint the purity that head shoots shall become. Their nonsense about trees is given no heed. Cannot they see that only one is worthy of their worship, and they stand before them? Fifteenth of Sandstone, 118. I found today the drawings for Headshoot's mighty defense, a great engine of terror which has claimed the lives of many. Although such sentimentality is inappropriate for the new dwarves we shall become, I've ordered corrected a small problem in its function, which caused the need for periodic pumping to replenish its magma flow. It should provide a steady flow from now on without the need for any dwarves to waste their divinely granted time on the frivolous turning of handles. We must better ourselves not our creations. Some migrants have decided to brave this terrifying place, knowing it may be their tomb. Some new disciples have arrived. A few appear distantly related to dwarves who once lived within these walls. The rest are unfamiliar to me, but they will be brought to see the dark, and they will understand. The transformation shall be upon us soon. All 
shall be born anew. We shall be washed in the divine light of the dark earth. Thirtieth of sandstone. At last, the time is upon us. I am revealed to all dwarf kind, for I am Zaleus, the one true prophet of our god, holistic detective. All shall bow before holistic detective and revel in her works. We shall be cleansed as she was, and if our faith is strong enough, it shall be an armor of righteousness, even as trail machines, and we shall emerge from the fires unscathed. I have released the transforming flood. Ask yourselves, will you, as holistic detective, wade across the fire? Will you abandon thought of self in pursuit of your duty? The faith of the just, the pure, the true shall survive, and all the wickedness of this pit of sin shall be cleansed in the blood of the stones. Come to me, for I am salvation. Believe, and ye shall live, but those whose souls are sunk in perfidity, those nobles and their supporters who cannot see the truth, they shall be consumed. The coming of the time of HD is at hand. We apologize for any inconvenience. Excerpts from the Gospel of Zaleus, first chapter of the Testament of Descent. First of Chalk, 118. And yea, with the coming of the cleansing fire, the dwarves of the fortress of Headshoots fled in terror, for their sin was great and deep, and they knew not the truth. For years had they lived in the presence of a god, and yet they denied her deity, held themselves level with perfection. Indeed, some even considered themselves greater than the one true deity, holistic detective, and the impurity of this thought ate at their very souls. And as the blood of the earth ran down the stairs and filled the hollows of the profaned citadel, its inhabitants were left with a choice. Submit to the cleansing fire, or retreat to the darkest depths of the mountain. Many chose to hide deep within the bowels of the earth, escaping the purification and sowing the seed of perfidity deep. It was then that Zaleus had a vision of that which was to come. The dwarves would be destroyed by wave after wave of fire, madness, disease, and chaos. They had rejected salvation. They were damned. Zaleus wept for the ruin of his people and cried out to Holistic Detective for their sake. And yea, he was answered. The voice of Holistic Detective spoke thus, My servant, though your people have rejected salvation, I will give them the chance to redeem their infidelity. Pray for them, and I shall end the time of cleansing and hold back the fire. A time of testing will be upon them. They shall see neither sun, nor trees, nor grass, nor shall they drink of spirits, for they must be purified. Those who survive this trial will be my descended. For their sake shall I cool the flames. Those who maintain impure thoughts shall burn in the internal fires until they give up their wrong ways or are consumed utterly. So speaketh the champion. 
And so Zaleus remained where he stood, wreathed in cleansing flame but unharmed, and prayed for the time of descent, when all dwarves would leave their amusements behind and learn piety, or else face destruction. Thirty days and thirty-two nights he prayed, until at last, holistic detective in her mercy, breathed upon the face of the fires and calmed them. Zaleus was freed from his vigil, and though weak from hunger and thirst, offered thanks for the mercy of holistic detective. Where he had stood, serpents were born from the fire to keep watch over the dwarves and to punish those whose will was impure. Seriously, he stood there on a tile of magma for an entire season, without food or water, and then walked it off when the magma cooled. Twelfth of Chalk, 118, and so began the time of descent, marked by trials of misfortune brought upon the impious, that they might better see the dark. First, came the trial of madness. The noble Iba the second, a most impure and terrible being, indeed so foul was his soul that he willingly stripped fellow dwarves of their means of living, became as an angry child. In his madness, he lay waste to all about him, his divine wrath granting him the strength to destroy even the very stones at his feet. He seized all of his earthly possessions and hurled them into the depths of a deep pool of clear water, where they hissed and crackled and burned as in a fire. He then roamed the halls, screaming hideously. His cries were so piercing that it was said any who listened would lose their sanity as well. One. Otto Print became so incensed by the screaming that he cursed the name of Holistic Detective. Of a moment, his body withered as a twig, his fluids boiled into steam, and he fell down dead. First of Malachite, Brute Force, the renowned engraver, was another whose faith was weak, unable to bear the loss of his works, unaware that mere carven rock means nothing to the champion our god. He sat weeping in the wilderness, unwilling to descend. Holistic Detective sent an avenging camel to teach him the folly of his ways. The camel, its eyes glowing with the fires of purity, tore brute force limb from limb, scattering his pieces to the four stones. Such is the fate of all who place material goods before the majesty of the champion. 22nd of Malachite. Verily, those who had thought themselves noble were truly unable to accept the reality that all dwarves are as dust before holistic detective, and until descended, none have earned the right to own any piece of this world. Otsp, the Countess Consort, began throwing a tantrum. In her desire to grasp the object she had once possessed, her divinely enhanced strength caused her to crush to dust several doors, a wall, and a number of valuable tables and chairs. This so enraged her husband, the Count, that he too took leave of his wits. 30th of Malachite, 118. Thus ends the first chapter of the Testament of Descent. Holistic detective, in her mercy, spared the impure from molten destruction on the condition that they submit and be tested. Those found unworthy would surely be destroyed. Such was the grace of the champion, however, that she spared her prophet Zaleus, though he fasted and lay full upon the face of the fires. His faith had preserved them from the fire of the physical world. But now, they would have to survive the burning fires of their own sins. Those whose souls were not consumed might rise as the descended and lead a new race of dwarves to glory. Out of character, Alias posted, It's now autumn, and by the Champion, this place is hard to destroy. 
For those who are confused, I didn't open Tribute. I just channeled a magma pool into the fortress's main level. At least, some nobles are going insane. Added to the roster of dwarves of this chapter, Flymolo, Oni Elem, Viki, Flocks of Mice. Full list of surviving dwarves coming at the end of my turn. Iba posted, Now, one thing I'm kind of curious about is why there weren't any fires or burning to death when you flooded the fortress with magma. I have to ask, did you turn temperature off? As far as I know, if you did, then once it gets turned on again, any dwarf that had been exposed to magma will spontaneously burst into flame. I guess the righteous cleansing fires of Holistic Detective to the superstitious lower class lot. If that's the case, we've got some Fist of the North Star style delayed fortress annihilation here. We're already dead. Alias posted, that is incredibly badass. You're right. Temperature appears to be off and I didn't notice. If this works, it'll be the most awesome ending ever. Thanks. Excerpts from the Gospel of Raelius, the Book of Heresy. Collected from the writings of Raelius, Grand Caliph of the Champion and Son-in-Law of Zaelius the Prophet. Second of Timber, 118. For though the dwarves of Headshoots had been shown the way, though they had been showered with infinite wealth, grace, the mercy of the Almighty Champion, despite the words of their prophets and the desires of their god, some chose to reject salvation. These incurable infidels did come forth and spake thusly, We defy you, holistic detective, and your prophet. We will destroy your works, and we will drink of spirits. We will see the sun. We shall ascend and fight you for eternity. And holistic detective was saddened. In her divine wrath, the champion did strike the heretics with plagues of fury. Some burst into flame and ran forth with smoke and ashes at their heels until they were consumed. But those who had not blasphemed were spared and were permitted to live on. Such was the mercy of the champion. They watched their condemned brethren run like flaming meteors in the depths, and some were troubled. Excerpts from the Gospel of Raelius, the Book of Betrayal. 16th of Timber, 118. And on that terrible day were the hearts of those heretics who had held their tongues filled with courage, and they determined to end the reign of the champion. For, they said, only in the prophet have these deeds been done. Only since his coming have these trials been visited upon us. Let us destroy him then, that the champion shall pass elsewhere, and we shall be spared, and we may drink of the spirits and be merry. And so they did lure the prophet Zaleus into the depths of a great cave, and there blinded him with a brilliant light, and in his blindness they smote him many blows, each striking in turn, so that none should know who had truly killed him. And upon the death of the prophet, his sainted flesh did vanish, leaving behind only the earthly calcium of his bones. But a pool of blood upon the stones remained, and from it issued a foul, violet smoke that choked all who came near. It passed that when the champion heard that, his, that her prophet had been killed, her heart was heavy, and she waited in the depths for the loss. Those around her were stricken with shadow, and a great sorrow fell on their hearts as they saw the truth of the betrayal. And they wandered the halls with heavy tread, weeping tears that turned to stone where they fell, and some of them dashed themselves against the walls or flung themselves into deep pits. So sad were they to witness the pain that this loss had caused their god. But the worst... The most evil stone-hearted dwarves, those whose hands had done the deed. No cleansing fire did they merit, nor were they granted the dignity of a quick death. 
Their bodies were destroyed, rotted from within, pustules formed on their skins, their beards fell from their faces as snow, and their eyes and mouths did leak blood upon the pavements. In agony did they perish, writhing as they felt the oncoming fires of eternal torment, until their blood was spent and they lay withered and cold, and their corpses were thrown by those who lived into a corner, and no burial nor sanctified rites were they given. And any who protested had at once the water leave their bodies in great clouds of steam, and they did fall where they stood as dust. The known Troublemaker, Count Cadenari's sword, became belligerent and foul. Too scared to risk the wrath of the champion and her attendants, he vented his wrath upon the beasts of the fortress, beating donkeys with his fists and chasing cats into the well. The children of the fortress learned from his example, becoming monstrous and violent. Their rage was mercurial in expression, but no one was safe from their presence. The Countess Ops left her infant son on a stone floor in horror at its anger, and fled, crying. In such a place, the few remaining loyal descendants eked out their days, in commemoration of the death of the prophet, that his sacrifice might never be forgotten, they etched upon the stones of headshoots a list of deaths of those who had blasphemed. Not all was darkness, however. The dwarf V. Elich L. was seized with inspiration, the divine darkness filling his mind with an image of that which true dwarves should hold dear. After many days of toil, he emerged with a token of the finest craft's dwarfsmanship, bearing an image of the finest traditions of dwarfdom, and the champion was pleased, declaring Vialish L to be a legendary carver of bone, and declared that so pleasing were his works that no other task should he have for all of his days. Behold, Toth Zimesh, Dusk Phantom. This is a cave lobster shell ring. All craft's dwarf ship is of the highest quality. It is decorated with cave lobster shell and dog leather, and encrusted with bands of violet spessartine, tower cap, pineapple opal, and native copper. On the item is an image of monarch butterflies in cave lobster shell. On the item is an image of a dog in saguaro. On the item is an image of Sankis, Healed Towers, the Dwarf, and Dwarves, in gold. Sankis, Healed Towers, is surrounded by the Dwarves. The artwork relates to the ascension of the Dwarf, Sankis, Healed Towers, to the leadership of the Pulley of Freckles in 10. 30th of Timber, 118. It passed that the day after this mighty crafting, the champion declared a day of mourning for the fallen prophet and the champion did lift her voice in song, and all in the meeting hall were astonished, for they did not understand her words. Holistic detectives spoke in the language of the gods, and sang thusly. I burned down the heretic dwarves. They died with an awful sound. The Countess Osp ran in and out, putting kids down on the ground. When it all is over... I shall have cleansed this godless race, for the infidel time is running out, and I shall bring upon this place smoke on the water and fire in the sky. 20th of Hematite, 118. There did arrive at Headshoots a group of disciples come to trade their wares and to learn from the teachings of the champion. And Raelius went out to them and asked if they were ready to leave behind their material ways and become descended. But they were not willing to submit to the rites of cleansing, and so Raelius in his anger raised his arms in the air and called out to the champion. Around the merchant disciples a wall of sheer rock sprung up, bursting forth from the earth. The wall had only one gate, and the gate was filled with cleansing fire. 
And Raelius bade the disciples walk through the fire, that they should be cleansed and free to descend. But the disciples were afraid, and ran in circles within the wall, and so they remained for many days, until both they and all their livestock were so full of fear, that they too doubted the deity of a holistic detective, and of a sudden they were all stricken with a divine madness, some frothing with rage and tearing at each other, and others staring sadly at the fire unable to move. Excerpts from the Parables of Raelius, the Second Prophet. Seventh of Moonstone, 118. And holistic detective did issue a proclamation that those who had sinned against her faith could be forgiven now, for most had done their best to descend, although it was whispered that this was purely from terror at the fate of those who had resisted. As a symbol of their pious regret, they were to face the challenge of courage. Each was assigned a lever of unknown function and ordered to pull it. Then, should they survive whatever strange results this produce, they would be declared free to descend. And yea, even the nobles, foul offenders that they were, humbled themselves before the levers of courage and pulled, and although many strange rumblings were heard from afar, none were struck down, and they rejoiced in their salvation. Because I guess those levers either connect to nothing or do something so obscure we'll never figure it out. First of Obsidian, 118. When one of the few remaining who had not tried to descend finally committed his inevitable blasphemy against the name of the champion, and at once toxic frog for his sins went insane, but so black was his heart that his madness turned to rage, and he began to froth and strike out at those around him. He seized the good and pious mortal sword, and before any aid could come began to beat him about the chest. When poor mortal sword called for aid, Toxic Frog's wrath waxed full, and in his divine madness he ripped mortal sword's arm from its socket and broke it in two. Toxic Frog, not content to merely injure his former friend's limb, beat mortal sword about the head with his own arm until his head was gravely injured and the blood flowed freely. The champion, upon hearing of this, considered striking down the errant madman herself, but determined that such honor was not to be his. Instead, she sent Nemo, her strongest servant, to chastise Toxic Frog with his sword of justice. Upon Nemo's arrival, Toxic Frog the Mad charged with screams of demonic fury, but the under-champion Nemo's strength and skill were not to be matched. Seizing Toxic Frog by the neck, the under-champion Nemo hurled him through the air. With supernatural speed, Nemo raced forward and overtook the flying miscreant, striking him with his mighty sword, such that Toxic Frog was cleaved in twain. And such was Nemo's anger at this heretic, that Toxic Frog's corpse was dragged to the lowest part of Headshoots, and flung into the pit with the demons, never to be recovered. Now the wounded mortal sword had partially descended before this happened, and such was the strength granted the descended that he survived this grievous injury, though he had to be taken to the bed to recover. There he lay for many nights until he was still alive the last I checked. 20th of Obsidian, 118. As reward for their penance, these dwarves were given that which they most greatly desired. Mark Gorm, who had longed for the skill and strength of a master crafts dwarf, was filled with divine inspiration and began constructing an artifact of undoubtedly great beauty. Meanwhile, in recognition of their spiritual rebirth, the nobles, Atsp and Katarani Sword, were granted a child of their union by the champion. So strong and noble was the boy that both descendant nobles felt their hearts uplifted. The shadow of their heresy left them, and they forgot, for a time, their reduced standing. And the boy was named by none other than the champion's prophet, Raelius, who spoke over him thus. 
This boy's destiny is great, but whether he shall achieve it is in the hands of others. His name shall be Nippy the Fish, that he might one day be as powerful and cunning as the dreaded carp. And now the blasted nobles are ecstatic again. All my work for nothing. 31st of Obsidian, 118. And so ends the tattered, blood-soaked remains of the Gospel of Zaleus and Raelius. What became of these prophets is uncertain. Perhaps later writings will speak of them. But their work shall live on amongst dwarf kind forever. In the name of the champion, may endarkenment come upon you. Out of character, Alias posted, Spring is upon us and my turn is up. Short of lava flooding the whole damn place again, I can't seem to destroy head shoots. The military is indestructible, the fortress is overflowing with food and drink, and the place is such a maze that it's almost impossible to trap anyone anywhere. The following is the list of the survivors. Tag Plastic, Mark Scorm, Athlete's Footnote, Bobbin Threadbare, Gogorzer, Evil Kool-Aid Man the Second, Gex, Great Badger, Moonin, Tinny Tim, Nice Aaron, V Elich L, Melan, Mortal Sword, Lackloss, Spooky Lizard the Second, Kennel the Second, I am Lemon, Clamps McGraw, Katarani Sword, Otsp, Nemo twenty three forty two, Holistic Detective, Tyskill, Rebuilt Box, Traxus the Fourth, Hellioning, Spermy Smurf, Jimiel, Vomarius, Orange Soda the Second, The Good Professor, Robert Dedford, Royal the Third, Frog the Third, Ski, Swatchester, Fly Molo, Raelius, Viki, Flocks of Mice, Spoon Boy, Haiku U2, Fabrice Ninja, Oli Ilim, White Cloak the Second, and Nippy the Fish. Sorry I couldn't get Holistic Detective to go berserk. She seems to be in a constant state of ecstasy, regardless of what's going on around here. Best of luck to the next overseer.